All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Jill here with Go English Coach, Advanced Grammar Students. What we've been doing, uh, if you remember, hopefully you remember, uh, we've been looking at the present perfect tense. We've been looking at past progressive. We looked at past tense. So last uh, class, we did a, um, let's see, we did present perfect. And what we, uh, we did the present perfect with since and for, okay? So remember, this is a really common um, verb form in English. We use this more than probably the simple present tense. Um, and I'm not sure why. So if you're, if you're wondering why, we can find some research on that for you. But essentially, um, we use this one a lot. And so it's really common. And so it really does uh, make a lot of sense that we spend a lot of time kind of figuring out what's going on and when to use this, how to use this. Um, by now, you should know how to use it. Um, just for the sake of being quick, let's do this. Um, remember, our formula is subject, okay? A form of have or, excuse me, has or have the participle, okay? That's our very simple boiled down version of our formula for the present perfect tense, okay? Then in our class last time, we talked about this plus, since, or for, okay? Hopefully you remember all of that. And hopefully you also remember when we use since or when we use for. There's two different scenarios. So, for example, we can say, I have studied English for many years, okay? That's a period of time, okay? I have studied English since 2020, a point in time. So, since is for a point, for is for a period of time, since for. Since four, okay? What we've got here behind me is another kind of way or an example that we use the present perfect. So this is not using since or for. Here are some examples. So we've got this up here, number one. So something that happened in the past, but it's talking about something that kind of recently happened, okay? So you're using a little bit of, um, it's unspecified time. So it has happened but we're not necessarily sure when, okay? So here's your example, Jason has eaten lunch. You can say Jason has eaten lunch already. Jason has recently eaten lunch. Jason just has just eaten lunch. And these are kind of the examples here, just, recently, already, yet, ever, and never. So um, these are kind of like, Yes, it happened. Yes, it happened. Yes, it happened. And then these are kind of no, no, no. Okay. And we'll, we'll look at some examples of that. So Jason has eaten lunch that happened in the past and it's right now. Okay. So this is right now. This has happened in the past. We're not necessarily sure when he ate lunch. Maybe it's two o'clock right now. And Jason ate lunch at 11, but it's not really clear or it's not really important, okay? It's maybe maybe somebody is giving out food and they say, oh, no, 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 Jason has eaten lunch already, okay? So then that's a possibility. And, and when he ate lunch is not important, okay? Um, so this, the, the kind of overview is that it occurred in the past, we are not sure, or it's not important when, okay? Um, so this is a little bit different, a little bit different of a usage. Um, Jason has eaten there many times. So we're talking about something that has happened in the past again and again and again. So we've got three little X's that happened in the past and he might eat there again in the future, okay? Jason has eaten there many times in the past, okay? If we want to say this in the negative, let's try that. Um, let's do that. So if we use, let's use some of these here. Jason has never eaten there. Okay, Jason has never eaten there. 
If you wanted to not use this one, you could just say, Jason hasn't eaten there, okay? So those are two ways of saying that sentence negative, that it has not happened. Um, let's, let's go up here and make these negative. So Jason has eaten lunch. Jason hasn't eaten lunch, okay? And you can make this one negative. He has just eaten lunch. Um, you would probably... You would probably just say he hasn't eaten yet. Okay, he has Jason hasn't eaten yet. That means he is hungry. Okay. All right. So there's some examples of using those other forms. All right, then we've got this one other example here. It says we use the present perfect with time expressions for unfinished time periods. So here are some examples. That sounds like a lot of kind of confusing words, but I think when you see these examples, you will understand, okay? So the first example I have here, I have had three cups of coffee this morning. Okay, so that's, in the, that's the present perfect. So I'm gonna just put here P, P, and this is just simple past. Okay, let's talk about what the difference is between these two sentences. They're really, really similar, um, but they have a little bit different meaning. Well, they have a very different meaning, okay? So what is happening in this sentence, if you say, I've had three cups of coffee this morning, to me, that means it's still morning time. Okay, so let's say, it's a little, you know, 10.30 a.m. And I say to you, I've had three cups of coffee this morning. Then that means, here is 10.30. Okay, I've had three cups of coffee this morning. And I might have some more. Okay? If I use the present perfect, it means... I started in the past and I might continue into the future. I might, I'm not sure, it's not clear, but I might, okay? And I or, and I know that it's currently, it's still the morning. Like I'm not done, I'm not done drinking coffee and it's the morning, okay? Maybe I'm not done drinking coffee. Versus if you compare that here, I had, just the past tense, I had three cups of coffee this morning. That means it's not morning. So it's not morning anymore, okay? That means maybe now I said this at 1 p.m. Maybe I said that at 1 p.m., okay? 